All right, let's continue counting. So the rules that we have so far are the sum rule, the subtraction rule, the product rule, the division rule. The sum rule, I'll just do two, you know. A or B is simply take A and take B as long as if they're disjoint. As long as these are disjoint, it's just simply add them up. The subtraction rule, also called the what? Inclusion, exclusion. is going to be that if we have A union B, the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B minus the cardinality of the intersection. Obviously, the inclusion-exclusion principle is more complicated. This is just two sets, right? If we have three sets, it gets a little bit more complicated. You subtract all the duals, you add the triples. If you have four sets, subtract the duals, add the triples, subtract the quad. And so you just keep on going through it in terms of... Uh, getting rid of the overcount. The, uh, this particular the subtraction rule is an overcount rule, right? I counted too many times because I had an overlap of some sort, so I overcounted. I have to get rid of my overcount. Um, after that, we had the product rule, which was looking at, I need to do something and something, and so that's just the cardinality of A, the cardinality of B. What is the key word for the sum rule? What word should you be looking for if you should be thinking of the sum rule? When you do a task, what word would show up? Or for the sum rule. Which rule for the product rule? And. So if you say this task needs to be done by this and this and this, you know, product rule. If it says this task needs to be done by this or this or this or this, you clue into, okay, this is going to be... Did I say the product rule right? Oh, I'm not feeling well, and I shouldn't take things like cold medication because it gets all fuzzy. So, um, if you have a bunch of ands, it's going to be the product rule. If you have a bunch of ors, it's going to be a sum rule. It can combine the two, right? You can do this and this or this, so you're going to have some products and sums. You have to figure out the process. On the other hand, the overcount issue with the product rule which is going to be lead into the division rule. The division rule is not as clean as the subtraction rule. The inclusion-exclusion principle is easy to think about. What's the intersection? The division rule is more complicated, and you would sit there and say that you calculated a task. So a task that you has n ways to do it. Right, so you calculated there was n ways that you were going to totally do this into particular thing, but for a specific way, normally you would label it like W, right? A specific way has D. ways for it to happen. That tells us that the cardinality of the task now is simply n divided by d. It's, we have to use English words. It's a little bit more complicated to talk about. Um, the easiest way to do the division rule is actually to have it several ways. We could have, uh, for example, on the division rule, let's say we have six blocks and four are red, and two are white. And we could ask particular things, like what are the total ways to arrange the six blocks? If I said total ways to arrange the six blocks, but you say you went through here and said, I didn't know that I had red and white for a second, right? We could just simply, if you didn't know that there were red and white, and I just simply said, how many ways to arrange six blocks, how would you do it? 
Well, how many blocks to choose from for the first position? Six. And so how many blocks to, and pick something for the second position. What is it? There's five left over, right? And four, and three, and two, and one. Um, some notation. Because uh, products like 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 happen a lot in these problems, man. We will introduce factorial notation. Here's the deal. Uh, we like to be lazy in math, right? And so multiplication is multiple additions. It's shorthand version of many adds. I don't want to do 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. I have to add 4 5 times. Let's say 5 times 4. Right? So we introduce multiplication. That's a notation to shortcut something that we already do. What's exponentiation? All right, 4 to the third power is really what? 4 times 4 times 4. Exponents are a shorthand notation for a bunch of multiplications of the same object. We introduce notation all the time to make our life easier. Factorial is, I'm going to write 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This would be a lot more complicated if I wanted 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. I don't want to write all that. So what we do is, for this, this 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is simply going to be 6 factorial. The exclamation point is just a notation to say every int from there all the way down to 1. So that's our notation. Some properties of factorial when you see things like this. Note. What if I had things like 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial? Well, that's just 6 times 4 times 3 times 2. 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 over 4, 3, 2, 1. So those all cancel, and that's just simply 6 times 5, right? So when you have factorial notation and you have a factorial over a factorial, you have a bunch of factors, you're going to get things to cancel. And the easiest way to do it is just to grab whichever factorial on the bottom is biggest and then just simply throw all those away with the thing on the top because they cancel out to the number one. So we should be able to do basic arithmetic using this new notation. So pretty much everybody I'm sure has seen this, but this is our new notation. So that tells us that this problem is 6 factorial. But if that's the ways to arrange 6 blocks, if back to our example, but of these 6 blocks, but again, this is for our example, for the 6 blocks, we had 4 red and to white. Here's the issue. If I gave you four red blocks that are absolutely identical to each other and I rearranged them, could you tell the difference? For example, I had all these chairs in this room and I said, please get up, walk out of the room. And I took two chairs and just simply moved the two of them into the exact same positions that they were, shape and everything. I said, come back into the room, and I asked, did I do anything? And everybody would say, no. It doesn't matter that you took these two identical objects and switched them. It has no meaning to me. So if I would look at this, I notice that for the four red, the four red have what? How many arrangements? Four, three, two, one, which is four factorial. Arrangements, right? What about the two white? 
have 2 times 1, I'll go ahead and leave it as factorial, 2 factorial arrangements. Why do I use the division rule? So the real way of how many, what's the cardinality of arrangements of 4 red and 2 white is, well, I had 6 factorial ways to arrange everything. But if I take those, ray, those reds and start switching them around, I don't, I don't recognize the difference. So that's been an overcount. Arrangements of reds are not anything new. Arrangements of white objects are not anything new. So I could leave it like that. But how could I simplify it? 4 factorial goes into 6 factorial, and what would be left over? 6 times 5. But 2 factorial is actually 2, and 2 goes into 6 <coughs> 3 times. There is only 15 ways. And so that's the division rule. The division rule is always about what could all happen together. Now let's stop and ask, is there really anything new here? I mean, is there some repeats over counting that I have to worry about? And since I used the, multi the, the product rule, I'm going to have to use the division rule to get rid of those overcounts. Here's another example of the division rule. 